Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. I'm so glad that you are here hanging out with me for a bit. Today, I thought it would be fun to do a chit chat kind of video talking about all of the authors that I would like to read to zero someday. So for the most part, the idea behind this video is to talk about authors that I plan to read every single thing that they've ever published. But there is at least one author in here where that's not entirely the case, and I'll explain why when I get to that author. But for the most part, these are authors that I love so much, and I want to read their entire backlist. And when I was thinking about this video and I was creating my list, it was actually really hard for me to come up with a list of authors, not because there are not so many authors that I love, but there are actually very few authors that I intend to actually read the entirety of their published works. That actually says a lot about how Far I've come as a reader. What I mean by that is I'm a completionist at heart. Like I wanted to be sure that if I was picking up a new author that I was going to basically read everything that they've ever written. So anytime I picked up a new author, my intention was always to read them to zero. And it's taken me a long time to get out of that mindset. So now if there's an author that's coming out with a new book that sounds really intriguing to me, and I've never been interested in their previous works before, I will allow myself to read that new release and then maybe keep an eye on their stuff going forward rather than forcing myself to get through their backlist. I know that's sounds weird and I know a lot of people probably don't have that same inclination but that has always been my way. For the most part I am and always will be a completionist and it's really difficult for me even still to start a new author or something if I know that I'm not going to read the majority of what they've written in the past. And I also know how ridiculous that sounds because authors grow right so a lot of their backlist stuff really could be different from what they're putting out now and the quality of what they're putting out now could be vastly different and so it makes sense that maybe I'm more interested in their new release stuff rather than their backlist titles but still in my brain. I'm a failure because I don't want to read everything that these authors have written. But I have compiled a list of about nine or ten authors here that I want to talk to you about. Some of them are probably not going to be a surprise to you because you've heard me talk about these authors multiple times on my channel over the past few months or the past few years and some of them may be a little bit more of a surprise to you. So I'm going to stop rambling now and we are just going to jump right in. So the first author of course I want to talk to you about is Colleen Hoover. Now this is the author that I have a caveat for and that is primarily because Colleen Hoover doesn't just write in the adult or new adult age range, although that's primarily what she writes. And she has written some young adult in the past. And I know that at least her one adult series, Slammed, has multiple books in that series. And at least one of those books is literally just a retelling of the first book from a different perspective. And I really don't jive with books like that. I really don't like that at all. And so even if that wasn't the case, even if all of the books were completely different, I really had no intention of ever going back and finishing that series. Slammed was actually the very first Colleen Hoover that I ever read. It's what really started me on the path of loving Colleen Hoover, but I've never ever had an interest in continuing that series. I thought the book was fine on its own and I didn't think that it needed any other books. And I'm very far removed from that book at this point. It's been about, I want to say like eight years since I've read it and I really have no intention of going back to it. So that is definitely one that I would not plan on reading. But other than that, I do plan on reading Colleen Hoover to zero, trying to read basically everything that she's ever put out to the best of my ability because she is one of my favorite authors of all time. And I will not be accepting any negativity on that point. I will just never kind of understand the criticism that she gets but to each their own. All I know is that she is one of my favorite authors of all time and I have every intention of reading Heart to Zero. Another author that's really not going to come as any surprise to you is Taylor Jenkins Reid and I'm holding up One True Loves because this is one of her contemporary novels. She wrote a handful of contemporary novels before she started writing the historical fiction world that we've all come to know through like Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones, Malibu Rising, and Carrie Soto and I want to say that there are four of them and I've only read this one and I absolutely loved it and I just know that her other contemporaries are going to blow me out of the water as well and I'm very excited to read them and so once I've read those three or four other contemporaries I will have read her to zero. I have no idea when she's coming out with another new book but y'all know that I will be here for that as well. So I think that she's one that I could easily read to zero within a short amount of time. A newer author that has recently made this list, Abby Jimenez. I read Part of Your World earlier this year and it was an easy five stars for me. This is probably one of the best romances that I've ever read. It has a lot of the things that I'm looking for in a romance and so as soon as I read it I knew that I had to read more by her. She had a new release come out called Yours Truly and because it was a book of the month selection and I tried to read those as soon as I can after they come in. I did end up picking up Yours Truly and I really enjoyed it as well. It wasn't quite as strong as this one was for me but I still really loved it. I think Abby Jimenez just knows how to write the perfect male love interest and I know that she has a few other backlist books. She has three within like this same companion series starting with The Friend Zone I believe. I don't know offhand if she has any more than those three but I already have two of them so I would only need to get one more to add to my collection and she's another author that I think I could easily read to zero. She is certainly one that I will be keeping my eye 
eye out for in the future for any new releases just because I loved this so much. And if you are looking for a new romance to blow you away, I cannot recommend Part of Your World enough. Another author that I have a slight caveat for is Sarah J Maas. So I absolutely love Sarah J Maas. She is one of my favorite fantasy authors. I'm completely caught up in the House of Earth and Blood series. I only need to read this one to be caught up in the Akatar series. And then I just have Kingdom of Ash and I will be done completely with Throne of Glass, which is a completed series. The reason I say that I have a caveat is because Sarah J Maas wrote this one-off book. I believe it was based on Catwoman and it was for the DC Icon series. And I have absolutely no interest in that whatsoever. I'm not a superhero girly. I have no interest in DC or Marvel. And I don't plan on reading that book just because Sarah J Maas wrote it. It was completely outside of the realm of what she normally does. And I don't really feel like I need to read that to read to zero. Another book that I have not entirely decided on whether or not I want to read is Assassin's Blade, which is a bunch of short stories that is set in the world of Throne of Glass. I have never been a person to really enjoy short stories or novellas. And I've never been one to believe that you absolutely need to have them in order to get the most out of a series that you're reading. I feel like if you did need to read them, that they should be included in the main books of a series. So I will consider myself having read Sarah J Maas to zero once I've caught up in all of her series. And that is good enough for me. Two authors I am including in here just because I do only have like one book each by them. And I know that I'm going to finish them by default. The first is Gillian Flynn and Dark Places is the final book that I need to read in order to be caught up with her work. She only has like three published works and a novella and I've already read everything else by her, including the novella. Now I am not reading her to zero because I absolutely love her. In fact, my feelings about Gillian Flynn are kind of lukewarm. I read Gone Girl years and years and years ago. I think I read it before it was like truly, truly a hyped story. And I remember not being super impressed with that. I don't know whether it's because I grew up on suspense thriller authors. The twist was not even that shocking to me. What got me about that book was the ending. Like I both hated and loved the ending of that story. But then years later, I picked up Sharp Objects and I really didn't like that story. But I did go ahead and get this because I want to see how I feel about it. I've completed everything else by her. I'm certainly going to read this. If I absolutely love this one, then I would consider picking up more from Gillian Flynn in the future. But if I don't, if I'm just lukewarm on this, I will probably think that Gillian Flynn is not an author for me. I know a lot of people love her and are really impressed by her, but so far I don't understand why, but I'm willing to see if she can blow me out of the water with this one. An author that I do love and I plan to pick up all of her books going forward, Ruth Ware. This is not the one that I need to finish. I need to finish Zero Days, I believe is the name of her newest release. And I don't have that yet, which is why I'm holding up this one. But Ruth Ware is definitely a staple mystery author for me. I consider her more mystery than suspense thriller. Her books are definitely a lot more slow burn. They're a lot more character driven. And I know that a lot of people really don't like her all that much because of that, because they're not getting the thrilling suspenseful on the edge of your seat experience with her. But I absolutely love the vibes of her book. I love following on the journey of her characters. I do consider her kind of to be somewhat of a modern day Agatha Christie. So like I said, she only has one book out there that I have not read. And I will certainly be getting to that in the future. Karen Slaughter, of course, is an author that I'm absolutely going to read to zero. Y'all know how I feel about Karen Slaughter. She is my dark, gruesome thriller queen and I absolutely love her. Triptych is actually a book that has been on my TBR. It was on my TBR last month and I couldn't get it from my library in time. Now it's on my TBR for this month and I still don't know whether I'm getting it from my library in time, but I will certainly be reading this very soon. I think at this point I have read almost everything from her except for the Will Trent series. I'm almost done with the Grant County series and I read almost every single one of her standalones, if not all of her standalones. So really the Will Trent series is all that I have to read by her. I'm hoping that I absolutely adore this series because I do not want to commit myself to a series that I'm not going to love, but assuming that I do love this series, I will absolutely be reading it Karen Slaughter to zero. Another fairly recent author that I've added to this list, but I cannot help but want to read him to zero, S.A. Cosby. I absolutely adored Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. I cannot even explain to you how satisfying that book was. It was gritty, it was dark, it was violent, but it was so incredibly satisfying. You root for the characters in that story, even though they are extremely morally gray, they are doing not so great things, but they are doing it in the name to avenge their sons who were brutally murdered just basically for being gay. And I absolutely wanted to see them get their justice and I I loved it so much from start to finish. And after I finished that book, I could not stop thinking about it. So I immediately grabbed this one from Book of the Month because I have Razorblade Tears in the Book of the Month edition. And he has a new release out called All the Sinners Bleed, which I don't have a physical copy of yet, but I will be reading it in October as part of Spookoplifon. And I'm really hoping above all hope that I love that story. I really don't expect it to be as amazing to me as Razorblade Tears was. I think it would take a lot to live up to that story, but I do believe that S.A. Cosby is a very masterful storyteller. And I'm looking forward to reading this one, All the Sinners Bleed. And and then he actually has one, an older release called My Darkest Prayer that I do plan on reading as well. He is certainly one that I plan to read to zero. Another author I do want to read to zero is B.A. Paris. So oddly enough, every single time I have a B.A. Paris book on my TBR, her books are consistently the lowest rated books on my TBR. I read Behind Closed Doors, which was her debut, and it's by far her most popular story. And I really loved it. You definitely get the chill factor from that story that you are looking for. But all of her other releases consistently get very, very low reviews. And the only one that I think that I haven't enjoyed up to this point was Bring Me Back. But everything else I really enjoy. I do have the prison
Prisoner and The Therapist. And once I read those two, I will be caught up on her published novels. She does have a little novella out that she wrote for an Amazon original story that I may get to as well. And I do believe that she contributed to a thriller with a couple of other authors. It was either that or an anthology. I would have to look. But essentially, it would be very easy for me to catch up on all her published works as well. And I would be completely willing to do it because I actually don't mind her stories at all. I pretty much enjoy them. So I'm happy to read her to zero. Jennifer Hillier is also an author that I now want to read to zero. I heard a lot of really great things about her, especially from Audrey at Chapter and Converse, who absolutely loves Jennifer Hillier. And so I picked up her book called The Butcher, and I absolutely loved it. That is one of those books that within the first chapter, your jaw is kind of on the floor because you cannot believe what you just read in the first chapter. And so that made me really want to read more from her. I then picked up this one, and this was pretty decent as well. It wasn't my favorite by her, but I recently read Jar of Hearts and Little Secrets, and I love them both as well. Jennifer Hillier, kind of like Karen Slaughter, does dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things very, very well. And I appreciate that about her. She doesn't have an extensive like backlist of everything that I need to read. So I should be able to catch up on that fairly easily. And I absolutely plan to. And then the last author I think I want to talk to you about today is Simone St. James. She typically writes paranormal stories, whether they are suspense thrillers or historical fiction, they typically have a ghosty nature to them. I read this in 24 hours because I could not put it down. I also really enjoyed The Broken Girls and her most recent release, A Book of Cold Cases, wasn't my favorite, but I still enjoyed it for the most part. I think that was more of a me thing than the book thing because I remember being very distracted while I was listening to it. So one of these days I might have to go back and reread it to get the full experience. But I just know that I really love what Simone St. James does with ghost stories. And I've read all of her recent releases. It's her backlist that I would need to catch up on. And I believe there's only maybe four or five books to her backlist. And I think they're all historical in nature. I'm typically not a big paranormal reader, but she just does it really well. And I would love to see what she's done with her backlist novels as well. And of course, I will always keep an eye on the stuff that she releases in the future. All right, everybody, those are some of the authors that I plan to read to zero. Of course, I haven't included any authors in here that I've already read to zero because there are no more books to read. I'm just keeping an eye on their future releases, kind of like Riley Sager. I've read everything that he has published so far under the name of Riley Sager, and I will be sure to read anything more that he does publish. I also didn't include some of my favorite authors that I love to death and they are auto buy for me, but I can't necessarily say that I want to read them to zero. For example, authors like Diane Chamberlain and Kristen Hanna, they are very prolific authors. They have been writing for a very, very long time time and they have books like stretching back into the 90s and I just don't think that I need to read them in order to consider Diane Chamberlain and Kristen Hanna my favorite authors because those books are also going to be very different probably in terms of subject and quality than the books that they are putting out today. So authors like that that go back years and years and years and years I just don't think that I have the energy to dedicate to reading those backlist books that are probably going to be dated. They're going to be very different from what I'm used to reading from these authors. I'm going to focus on some of their more recent backlists so like maybe things from 2014, 15, 16 and so on and then of course all of their new releases and like I said that really just shows kind of how I've grown as a reader the fact that I don't feel the need to read their backlist books in order to consider them like my favorite authors. All right y'all that is it that is all that I have for this video of course please comment down below and let me know some of the authors that you would love to read to zero and of course if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week mostly I do too and y'all know that I love connecting with you in those videos. Your comments help me and my channel so very much. They are always appreciated. And I would also love to connect with you on any of my other social media platforms, which are always linked down below along with the books that I discuss in each video. But until next time, guys, bye.